Good evening and welcome to the Seth Joyner Show. Well, this thing has now come full circle. Our greatest concerns for this team have been confirmed. All season long, this team has been trying to tell us who they are. And because of their comebacks, the resilient efforts, and the 10-0 start, we ignored all the warning signs. We can now believe it. When someone shows you who they are, believe them. It's time for my breakdown. There's so much to unpack here that I almost fear that I don't, won't have enough time. Let's start with the defense. The move to Matt Patricia proved to be a moot one. In week 14 of the season, what could Nick Sirianni expect to change by demoting Sean Desai to the booth and turning over play call into Patricia? If the decision to do so was really even truly his, while the defense seemed in the first half to remedy some of their problems, yielding only 90 yards of total offense to the Seahawks, the second half proved to reveal that little had really changed. The Seahawks came out and attacked one of the Eagles' Achilles heels, which is the run game. Kenneth Walker looked like Bo Jackson in the second half, rushing for 65 yards on 12 carries and one touchdown on 5.4 yards per carry. He jump-started this Seahawks offense, which allowed Drew Locke to guide this offense to three scoring drives out of their five second-half possessions. Locke went 12 for 19, 144 yards, and guided the Seahawks on a 10-play, 92-yard scoring drive over the last one minute and 54 seconds of the fourth quarter, culminating in a 29-yard touchdown pass to Jackson Smith and Jigma to complete the comeback. The mixture of multiple players who played sparingly all season and some questionable defensive calls in the second half prove that the defensive woes are a combination of fractured play calling and obvious lack of talent. Offensively, this unit is stuck in neutral. While the Birds ran the ball effectively enough to control the game, they just couldn't finish drives and lacked the continuity and creativity to take advantage of the 26th ranked defense in the National Football League. Scoring points has become a struggle lately and Jalen Hurts played one of his worst games as an Eagle. The offense is predictable, lacks creativity, and Brian Johnson has shown an inability to create schemes for this highly talented offensive unit to take advantage of. I've been an advocate for Jalen Hurts, but he has not played well for some time now, and the thought of regression is becoming real. He's locking in on wide receivers, missing open opportunities, and looks unsure and confused at times. I'm not sure if it's the offensive philosophy of shot plays and explosive plays down the field or the fact that Jalen is not seeing the field like he has in the past. But there are plays there to be had and made, and he consistently looks to make the big play rather than take the layup that's there to be had. Why is it so difficult for Nick, Brian, and Jalen to just take what the defense has given them. Move the chains, convert in the red zone, those opportunities and third down opportunities. Greed creates defensive opportunities for turnovers and Hurts is turning the ball over at an alarming rate, which allows opponents to stay in games and for their confidence to grow believing that they can win games that clearly they should be losing. This is a huge loss and there's enough blame to begin at the top with Howie Roseman down to the last man on this broken and flawed roster. That's my breakdown. After this break, Freddie Coleman of ESPN Radio joins me to further analyze what has happened to this once promising team and what the birds have to look forward to over the last three weeks of the regular season. When you open the Bet Parks app, you're in the zone. Winning is always a rush, but the money is in the moments. It's the anticipation of another face card, the thrill of an extra spin, and the pure joy of a jackpot. It's all your favorite games at your fingertips. Plus, get up to $1,000 casino bonus back if you're down in the first 24 hours. You play for fun, you love to win. You bet. Bet Parks. This is Seth Joyner, top analyst for the birds. I've also analyzed the best auto dealerships, and I drive a Davis Honda. Fall into savings at Davis Honda. Over 300 cars available. And right now, get rates as low as 0.9% at Davis Honda in Burlington. Plus, you'll get two years of free oil changes on every new and used Davis Honda vehicle. See why Davis Honda continues to win outstanding awards for sales and service, including the highest award from Honda, the President's Award. Get to Davis Honda in Burlington. Fall into savings at Davis Honda. 
Welcome to Bridgeview Partners, where IT and business innovation merge. We're not just another tech company. We're your strategic partner in navigating the ever-evolving digital landscape. Our team of experts tailors cutting-edge solutions to fit your unique needs, and ensuring your success is our top priority. Elevate your business with Bridgeview Partners. Discover the power of partnership and tech innovation today. Contact us now to experience the difference. Bridgeview Partners, where innovation meets excellence. If you understand that success is built on trusted relationships and dependable performance, MidPen Bank is the right bank for you. We're on a mission to prove that the right bankers can make a big difference. We work harder, we get things done, and we're in your corner. With financial centers strategically located throughout the greater Philadelphia region and new locations in central New Jersey, we're ready to bring you the best in commercial and personal banking. Call or visit us today to connect with a professional MidPen banker. Member FDIC. Go Eagles! At Revolution X, we know that fortunes are made in times of uncertainty. Are you selling your investment real estate? Are you interested in deferring your tax with the 1031 exchange? At RevX, we're experts in 1031 exchange planning and the use of passive real estate options using DSTs. Not in the midst of an exchange and want to invest in real estate, but don't know where to start? Revolution X has institutional grade real estate options for any size investor right now. Set up a consultation at RevXWealth.com. RevX, defer the tax, maximize the gain. This segment is brought to you by Davis Honda of Burlington. Joining me now, Freddie Coleman, co-host of the Freddie and Harry Show on ESPN Radio from 3 to 7. Freddie, welcome to the Seth Jordan Show, my friend. I am honored, my man. I mean, as many times I've watched you play in your NFL career, you were gracious to come on my show with Harry Douglas not too long ago. man. I'm honored by the ask. I'm really looking forward to the day, my friend. Well, thank you, man. Let's jump into it. So I'm sure you witnessed that collapsed by the Eagles on Monday Night Football. From your perspective, what has happened to this once promising team? Seth, it goes back to something that we talked about not too long ago, and that is the Eagles' identity is not the identity in 2023. And I think a big part of the identity last year was that running game created that toughness, not just physically, but also mentally. And when you don't have that to help out your quarterback or to help out your defense, you don't want to put it all in the players and the coaches or separate the two. But when you find an identity and you know that that formula works and you've gone away from it, even though they started off 10 and 1, there were certain things they needed to clean up that they didn't worry about. And now those things have come to roost while losing the last three games. All of a sudden, a 10 and 1 team is now a 10 and 4 team trying to scratch and claw to find some answers down the stretch. Okay, so a lot of controversy encompassing this team last week following back-to-back beatdowns by Dallas and San Francisco, player grumblings, a D.C. switch midweek, and then Hurts being sick, having to fly in separate from the rest of the team. How do you think all of these elements affected not only the team's play, but their focus on Monday night? So that's a really good question because you know this. Anytime you have outside distractions or even internal distractions, if you happen to worry about trying to overcome that and you got a two-game losing streak, that could be a recipe for a disaster. And it seemed that that disconnect really was able to surface a lot when they played on Monday night and losing to Seattle Seahawks. Where guys weren't in position. I thought Dylan Hurts with those two interceptions, he was trying to do too much and not relying on the fact that Hey, let's make the simple play. Let's make the right play. Let's make the let's make, let's make the perfect play, but not trying to be a perfect situation when it comes to the Philadelphia Eagles. You add all of that on top of the fact that their identity was taken away the way they lost to the San Francisco 49ers and the way they lost to the Dallas Cowboys, that when you're searching and you don't believe you can find something, anything that's outside of your preparation and focus is going to take away that preparation and focus. And I think we saw that manifest itself on the football field with Jalen Hurts, like I mentioned, he throws a couple of interceptions. They bring in Matt Patricia to take on a defensive play calling, and it was not like he was lighting up the lamp when he did that with the Patriots or he was the coach of the Detroit Lions. This is a football team that should not have these kind of distractions at this point in the season being a 10-win team in the NFL. Agreed, agreed. And you know what? As Jalen Hurst goes, so does this offense and this team for the most part. Um, some regression, some believe. Um, coaching inefficiencies, you know, are part of the problems. At the end of the day, Hurts has played better. What's your take yeah. on how he's playing this year and where he is in this in this process? I think a lot of it Jalen Hurts, and it can't just be an injury thing, Seth. I think a lot of Jalen Hurts is that he understands – what kind of pressure is internal on this football team when you got so close last year and it tied you with a better team in the Super Bowl than the Kansas City Chiefs? 
automatically you're going to get everybody's best shot. The problem the Philadelphia Eagles, in my opinion, and this is not just a Jalen Hurts thing, Seth, but really Eagles thing, they're not giving their best shot to teams. And it can be very, very difficult to understand how you can go from being the hunter to being the hunted. It was different last year. We knew they were the best team in the NFC. They proved that it was a different case of being the hunted. But this year, many people look at you and say, man, that team can get through a Super Bowl. That team has that toughness and attitude. We better match that or they're going to run us out of their building or our building. And they have not been able to give their best shot to teams while getting everybody's best shot each and every week in the NFL so far this year. Okay, so after starting 10 and 1, the Birds have dropped the last three games in a row. Um, in week 15, you want to be peaking. They seem to be on a precipitous slide. Um, is there any remedy? Can they rescue this season? Because they've already clinched the playoff spot. Can they remedy where they are right now going into the playoffs? To me, the best remedy is you got to keep things simple. And I think a lot of times, I think the Philadelphia Eagles have tried to maybe outkick their coverage, for lack of a better term. What has been the big thing why the Eagles were so successful last year? We mentioned it earlier on your show here. They were able to run the football. They were able to play tough on defense. Their back end could plash the wide receivers, and they could get home with their pass rush. And a lot of times, even they had defensive deficiencies on the back end. It didn't really matter when you sacked the quarterback 72 times in the regular season like they were able to do. So we're seeing the offensive line not be the offensive line that we were able to see last year and at previous times this season. We have not seen that defensive line, whether it's Hassan Reddick or Brandon Cox or Jalen Carter, anybody else on the defensive line that should be a lot better than what we've seen. They have not been able to get that pressure in the quarterback, and we saw that on Monday night when they allowed Drew Locke to go 90-plus yards and get the winning touchdown when you had a chance to keep them out of the end zone. Until they remedy that, where they got to dominate the line of scrimmage and go back to that toughness quotient that was high last year, but that has not even been 50% this year. If they're not able to find that elixir, Seth, then this is going to be a team that even the schedule in their favor, two out of your last three games against the New York Giants, there are no guarantees you're going to win those games going away and find a way to get a better seat and also win the division in the NFC East. Now, that being said, you touched on the Giants. They got the Giants at home, the Cardinals at home, and then the Giants up in New Jersey. Both teams have had tough seasons. And looking at the Eagles and how they played the last three weeks, they both got to believe that they can get a W here. Uh, what chance do you get the Eagles to run the table here and gain some momentum going into the playoffs? I give them a 75% chance, Seth, because they're a better football team than the Giants team they're going to play twice and an Arizona Cardinals team they're going to play once. Even though the Cardinals gave a little bit of holy you-know-what to the San Francisco 49ers on Sunday before the 49ers ran away and hit in that ball game. And if you're the New York Giants, if you can't win your division or can't get to the playoffs, what's the best way is to keep somebody else out of the playoffs? And you know they would love to do that when they play against the Philadelphia Eagles twice in the last three weeks. So if you're Philadelphia, you know you are the better football team. You know you are the more talented team than the teams you're about to play. Well, go out there and prove it against those two teams in the last three weeks that have absolutely nothing to play for. That means there's no pressure on their plate. They do not have to worry about somebody coming in and taking their food away because they're playing with house money. If you're the Eagles, you have a lot to lose. You can't afford a team like the Giants playing them twice or the Arizona Cardinals playing them once to believe that they can win that football game because I know from both of those teams coached by both of those teams right now, I believe that we can get one of those games against Philadelphia based on the lack of confidence or the confidence crisis that they're going through right now. Freddie, man, it's always great to catch up to you and chop up some football. I appreciate your time, my friend. Thank you. And anytime, so always willing to do anything for my brother, even though as a Cowboys fan, to be morally opposed, but I can't do that because you're such a great person and a terrific <laughs> player as well as a terrific host. So it was my honor. Have a great holiday as well, my friend. Oh, you do the same, my friend. All right, coming up next, Brad Feinberg joins me to talk Week 16's Fantasy and Betting. When you open the Bet Parks app, you're in the zone. Winning is always a rush, but the money is in the moments. It's the energy of being all in, the passion of a perfect parlay, and the pure joy of a jackpot. It's another opportunity to win big every day of the week. Sign up for Bet Parks and get a welcome offer today. You play for fun, you love to win. You bet. Bet Parks. This is Seth Joyner, top analyst for the Birds. 
I've also analyzed the best auto dealerships and I drive a Davis Honda. Fall into savings at Davis Honda. Over 300 cars available. And right now, get rates as low as 0.9% at Davis Honda in Burlington. Plus, you'll get two years of free oil changes on every new and used Davis Honda vehicle. See why Davis Honda continues to win outstanding awards for sales and service, including the highest award from Honda, the President's Award. Get to Davis Honda in Burlington. Fall into savings at Davis Honda. Welcome to Bridgeview Partners, where IT and business innovation merge. We're not just another tech company. We're your strategic partner in navigating the ever-evolving digital landscape. Our team of experts tailors cutting-edge solutions to fit your unique needs, and ensuring your success is our top priority. Elevate your business with Bridgeview Partners. Discover the power of partnership and tech innovation today. Contact us now to experience the difference. Bridgeview Partners, where innovation meets excellence. J.P. Mascaro & Sons is a family-owned, locally operated solid waste service company in business for over 60 years. You've seen the red trucks with the blue elephant that symbolizes strength and reliability. Mascaro is different than other national brands. Like the birds, Philadelphia is home. They'll take care of all your waste removal needs. They have it all, an experienced workforce, state-of-the-art equipment, a cutting-edge recycling center, and their own disposal facilities. Call 888-MASCARO or visit jpmascaro.com. At Mandrakia Law, we win big personal injury cases, but we always tell our clients up front that those cases almost always hinge on how much insurance coverage people or companies have. At Mandrakia Law, we don't sell insurance, but we're experts at helping our clients make sure they have the right insurance to protect their businesses and families. Do you have the right insurance? Most people don't. For a consultation, visit mmattorneys.com or call 610-584-0700. Mandrakia Law, aggressive attorneys who get the job done. This segment is brought to you by Bet Parks. Welcome back. Follow Brad Feinberg at Brad's Best Bets for this week's picks as well as bonus picks for the weekend. Brad Wild, the Eagles are in the tailspin. I don't even know what to say, man. They've got a playoff spot locked up, but, you know, I'm talked out. You know, let's start with the picks, my friend. <laughs> All right, Seth. Listen, hopefully we're going to have a good – last week we had a good week. Hopefully we're going to do it again this week. Seth, I'll start out with Seattle. You know, we watched them on Monday night against Philadelphia. They're laying two and a half points against the Titans team that, to me, had every business in the world. They should have beaten Houston. Houston was missing their entire roster. They couldn't do it. Uh, Seattle, I think that lot, that win's going to motivate them. They have a chance now to get in the playoffs. I like Seattle laying less than a field goal uh, in that game, laying two and a half points. Seth, I'll stick with the Eagles. I understand everyone is now down on them, and me included, but – they're laying 10 points against, in my opinion, Seth, a very impotent Giants team that is not good enough. I think the Eagles' defense in this particular matchup should have success, and I expect Philadelphia to score 30-plus here. I like the Eagles laying the 10. And, Seth, the team, I love this Los Angeles Rams team. You're going to laugh at me. I think they may be the second-best team in the NFC when healthy. In fact, the advanced metrics show when healthy, they've been the second-best team in the entire NFL, only second to the 49ers. If the Eagles play them in the playoffs, I think the Eagles may be in trouble. But I like the Rams laying four points at home against a very overrated New Orleans Saints team, in my opinion, Seth. Like this Rams team a lot, laying only four. And lastly, Seth, I'm going to take the Atlanta Falcons, what I consider to be a 50-50 game. They're getting two and a half points at home. I think the game's a total coin flip. Um, and again, Seth, like they lose a lot of games by one or two. All their games are close, every one of them. Give me the Falcons plus two and a half in a true coin flip. All right, Brad, so what players and defenses are you liking for week 15 on the fantasy side? Seth, I'll start at a quarterback. Nick Mullins, uh, ex-Eagle, I believe. I think he had a cup of coffee here. Nick Mullins going against, in my opinion, an overrated Lions defense. He's at home in a dome, one of the cheapest quarterbacks on the board this week. I think the Vikings have a chance to win the game outright. I say they scored 21-plus. Give me Nick Mullins as one of the cheapest quarterbacks. Running back, Seth? Devin Singletary got 26 carries last week against the Titans. Pierce, forget about him. He's out of the rotation. Singletary is one of the cheaper running backs. Uh, has it, you know, look, not the best matchup this week against the Browns, but with that kind of workload, give me a very cheap Devin Singletary. Wide receiver, Seth, I'm going to go with Drake London. Being priced out of the top 25, I think the guy's a big talent. The game last week against Carolina, horrible weather conditions. Now in a dome against a below-average Colts secondary, I'm going to take my chances with him. And lastly, he said defensively, Chicago Bears. This team's defense is really good. They're a cheap defense, or I think the sixth cheapest defense this week going against the below-average Arizona offense. Give me the Bears. All right, Brad, so what players and defenses are you staying away from and down this fantasy stretch? 
Well, Seth, two weeks ago I faded C.J. Stroud against the Jets. Turned out to be a prescient move and that he didn't do much. I'm going to fade him again this week. I love the player, but against the Browns, he's like the third most expensive quarterback. Browns have a good pass defense, Seth. No C.J. Stroud. Running back-wise, Seth, David Montgomery. Love the player. Very good. But now he's in a true timeshare with Jameer Gibbs, uh, the rookie who's been great. And the Vikings' run defense, Seth, is elite. And Montgomery's one of the most expensive running backs. No thank you. Wide receiver-wise, this is recency bias, Seth, at its highest. We saw Terry McLaurin go off against the Rams, but the four games before that were all single digits. Now going against Sauce Gardner and the Jets' defense, being priced higher this week. No thank you, Terry McLaurin. And last, Seth, the Lions' defense. Fifth most expensive defense. Again, in a, I don't think they're that good defensively. Playing against a team that has Justin Jefferson, Jordan Addison, TJ Hawkinson. No thank you to the Lions' defense. Brad, appreciate you as always, my friend. Thanks for your insights. You're the best, Seth. Thank you so much. Good luck to everyone out there. All right. See you next week. After the final pause for the cars, I'll share my closing thoughts and predictions for the Eagles Christmas Day matchup versus NFC East rival, the New York Giants. J.P. Mascaro & Sons is a family-owned, locally operated solid waste service company in business for over 60 years. You've seen the red trucks with the blue elephant that symbolizes strength and reliability. Mascaro is different than other national brands. Like the birds, Philadelphia is home. They'll take care of all your waste removal needs. They have it all, an experienced workforce, state-of-the-art equipment, a cutting-edge recycling center, and their own disposal facilities. Call 888-MASCARO or visit jpmascaro.com. At Mandrakia Law, we win big personal injury cases, but we always tell our clients up front that those cases almost always hinge on how much insurance coverage people or companies have. At Mandrakia Law, we don't sell insurance, but we're experts at helping our clients make sure they have the right insurance to protect their businesses and families. Do you have the right insurance? Most people don't. For a consultation, visit mmattorneys.com or call 610-584-0700. Mandrakia Law, aggressive attorneys who get the job done. At Revolution X, we know that fortunes are made in times of uncertainty. Are you selling your investment real estate? Are you interested in deferring your tax with a 1031 exchange? At RevX, we're experts in 1031 exchange planning and the use of passive real estate options using DSTs. Not in the midst of an exchange and want to invest in real estate but don't know where to start? Revolution X has institutional grade real estate options for any size investor right now. Set up a consultation at RevXWealth.com. RevX, defer the tax, maximize the gain. If you understand that success is built on trusted relationships and dependable performance, MidPen Bank is the right bank for you. We're on a mission to prove that the right bankers can make a big difference. We work harder, we get things done, and we're in your corner. With financial centers strategically located throughout the greater Philadelphia region and new locations in central New Jersey, we're ready to bring you the best in commercial and personal banking. Call or visit us today to connect with a professional MidPen banker. Member FDIC. Go Eagles! When you open the Bet Parks app, you're in the zone. Winning is always a rush, but the money is in the moment. It's the confidence an underdog's covering, the tension before a clutch turnover, and the pride of a parlay paying off. It's another chance to win big with all-day action. Plus, win your first $10 bet and get $125 in sports bonus bets. You play for fun, you love to win. You bet. Bet Parks. This segment is brought to you by Bridgeview Partners. Welcome back. My concerns about this team have been confirmed. As I stated in my opening comments, they tried to tell us all year who they were. And after a three-game skid, we need to believe them. But as true fans, we'll never give up hope that our birds can turn it around. With so much hope that this would be another season for a Super Bowl run, those expectations seem to be dashed. This team has been trying to find itself all season. They managed to get by with less than stellar play most of the year, but like all inefficiencies and shortcomings, they always, at one time or another, rise to the forefront. As talented as this offense is, it is beyond imagination that they can be as ineffective as they are. The OC seems lost. The quarterback has taken steps backwards in a year when we all believe he'd elevate his game. And the skilled players, A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, and Dallas Goddard, along with DeAndre Swift, look frustrated. The players' jobs are to execute the game plan and play the plays that are called. 
But without a cohesive plan that's flexible and adjustable, it's difficult for players to succeed. That falls on the coaches, in my opinion. I'm not pointing the fingers purely at the coaches, but they have to bear some of the responsibility for the precipitous slide that we're witnessing from a year ago. It all begins with the head coach, the offensive coordinator, and the quarterback. Brian Johnson was Nick Sirianni's choice, and with a perceived quarterback on the rise, this offense has been inconsistent, to say the least, much of the season. On the defensive side of the ball, I'm going to add Howie Roseman to the mix because he is the one responsible for building this roster. While he has done a great job of building the D-line, he has historically failed at the linebacker and secondary levels. The decision to not re-sign T.J. Edwards, Marcus Epps, and C.J. Gardner-Johnson was a fatal flaw in my opinion. Now, I know they couldn't re-sign all of them, but T.J. Edwards and C.J. Gardner-Johnson, that turned out to be significant losses. Bradbury and Slade both, plus 30-year-olds, were a big miscalculation. C.J. Gardner-Johnson and either Slay or Bradbury should have been the play, along with retaining Edwards. The linebacker position is completely devoid of talent worthy of a team with Super Bowl aspirations. Although there are future hopes for the secondary, they will need time to grow up at this pro level. Throwing Matt Patricia and Sean Desai into this debacle, this defense has sunk to the depths that no one could have foresaw. No one will feel sorry for them moving forward. On the contrary, the media and opposing fans will revel in the demise of these Philadelphia Eagles. They have three winnable games remaining. Can they salvage the season? Yes, but the Giants nor Cardinals will lay down for them. They better figure out how to get well quickly with the playoff four weeks away. Time may have run out to right the ship for the playoffs, but if they hope to salvage their season, They better start this week by beating and handling a New York Giants team that's clearly looking to the offseason and to vacation. I like the Eagles to dominate this game 32 to 14. Thanks for tuning in to the show. Check in next week as we post view Monday's Giants matchup and look ahead to the final regular season game at the link versus the Arizona Cardinals. Merry Christmas. I hope you had a happy Hanukkah. Feliz Navidad, happy Kwanzaa to all of you and yours, Philadelphia. Go Birds.